In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with QuickBooks Online step by step. You might be watching this video because you're a business owner and you're just getting started with an accounting system. Maybe you already have QuickBooks Desktop and you want to convert your QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Or maybe you just want to learn QuickBooks and you want to kind of start from scratch. If so, this video is for you. Let's start by going into the QuickBooks page where it shows you the different versions of QuickBooks Online that you have. You're going to have Simple Start, Essentials, Plus, and Advanced, priced at 30, 60, 90, and 200. Now, keep in mind these are the monthly subscription fees per company, and this is the price as of the date I'm recording this video. In the future, QuickBooks could always increase those prices. Now, when you buy directly to the QuickBooks website, you, you have the option to get 50% discount for three months. So that's an option that you have. However, as a YouTuber that does a lot of QuickBooks content and, uh, and a QuickBooks reseller, I do have access to better pricing. So for example, if you were to get Simple Start, you get 30% off, but for 12 months. Essentials plus same thing. So any version of QuickBooks Online that you purchase, you get 30% off for 12 months. Okay, so now you pick the right version that's for you. There's a couple of options here, a listing of features that tells you what has what. Obviously, you want to read through that. You can look at each of the bubble and kind of see what they have. I do recommend to check out my webpage. I actually have a page where I synthesize that information for you. So for example, these are the features that you see in QuickBooks Online Essentials that you don't get in Simple Start. And then here is a video to each of those crucial features that make a difference between one version and the other. Same thing for Plus. So if you're in between Plus and Essentials, or if you're in between Advanced and Plus, again, all the features are listed here. And there's an accompanying video to each one if you want to get a better understanding for what each of those features mean. Now, uh, it's okay. Whichever version of QuickBooks you pick, you could always upgrade or downgrade in the future. You can do that seamlessly. Uh, seamlessly so you don't have enormous amount of pressure to get it right from the very beginning. And unfortunately, uh, these, uh, this listing of features is technically not complete. So that's why I recommend to take a look at that web page that I put together. It's a quick one page web page and I want to put the link to that description. I'm also going to put the link to my affiliate link so you can purchase QuickBooks online at 30% off for 12 months. That's going to be the best deal in town. Okay, so you're going to pick the version that works best for you. For example, I'm going to try Essentials. And again, if you're going to try it for 30 days and you do get a 30-day risk-free trial, so if you, you know, if you cancel within the 30 days, you pay nothing if you're not happy. For most people, it's probably best to try the, the, the highest version so you kind of see all the features that, that they have. But you can always, again, you can always look at that particular web page that I'll put in the description if you want to double check and triple check if you need any of those features. Of course, I don't want you to get any subscription level that has got more stuff that you don't need. Obviously, I want you to pay uh, you know, the lowest amount that your business needs. Now, most of my clients start in Essentials, and a lot of them, I would say in the average, they're using Plus, and maybe only the larger companies <clears throat> are in advance. There's a couple of things I don't like about Simple Start, which is I don't really get anybody started in Simple Start. And again, if you look through the list of features, you'll see uh, some of the things that um, Essentials has that like, to me is crucial is, for example, time tracking, item bundles, custom fields, uh, in, in some cases, multiple currency, and having more than one user. To me, having more than one user is really important. Again, some micro businesses might not need um, multiple users and those things that I mentioned. So again, you make the choice, whatever works best for you. So I'm going to click on try it for free. And then on the next step, it's going to ask me to create a login. So for example, I'm going to try to create a login using my email. And I'll put a phone number. And this has to be a phone number that you can get text messages to. And if you already have an Intuit login with that email, uh, it's not going to let you create a new account. If you already have an Intuit login, you have to actually click on the little button that says sign in. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. So it says sign in. And, and the reason for that is because you cannot create multiple accounts with the same email. Now, if you never use QuickBooks or you don't know why you even have a QuickBooks account, don't worry about it. You can just click on recover your account and go through the process of recovering it. Again, if you don't want to use a different email address other than the one that you um, are attempting to use, make sure that you use the sign in process and not the or, or the new account creation process so you don't have to create a brand new account. So anyway, 
I'm going to go in here and put the information again. And I'm going to make a slight here change to the, the login. So that way it's a brand new email. Okay. And then you're going to put your password and then you're going to go to the next step. So once you go to the next step, uh, it's going to ask you to verify the code. So you're going to get your cell phone and verify that code and put that code in there. Then once you enter the code, it will go ahead and create the account for you. Again, if you were not, if you didn't have an account before, I'll create a brand new account. If you had an account, then you go through the uh, sign in or the account recovery process. Next, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions. Typically, I just hit next. I'll try to put some of the stuff here um, that's relevant. Um, in many cases, I do these settings after. I don't try to waste too, too much time with these questions. So I'm going to put, I'm going to, for the most part, I'm going to say no or skip. You're going to see me doing a lot of um, skip to a lot of these because I, again, I don't want to waste too much time in this process. None of these questions are important whether we get them right or wrong. It actually doesn't make any difference. Um, so you could try to skip as many as possible. Um, to speed up the process. And, and, and again, depending on what you answer here, QuickBooks will use this information to market more services and products to you. So again, I'm going through, I'm skipping as many things as possible just so we can go quickly with the setup process because I'm going to show you how to do a setup so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to skip everything, okay? Even connecting your banks, skipping setting up uh, uh, merchant fee accounts, skipping setting up payroll. I'm going to skip everything to go straight into the brand new a QuickBooks online screen. Okay, so once you're done through that process, uh, the first thing you're going to see is your left navigation bar. That's where you're going to have all the tools to access everything in QuickBooks. On the top, while you're in the first 30-day trial, uh, you're going to have uh, the the subscribe now button. In some cases, it'll ask you to put a credit card in. In some cases, it won't. It kind of like it, it seems to vary. Sometimes it forces you to enter a credit card in immediately sometimes it doesn't it's kind of kind of random sometimes um but anyway that's the way the screen looks at this point at this point if you are a person that's coming from quickbooks desktop and you want to transfer your historical accounting data from quickbooks desktop you're going to stop you're not going to do anything here anymore because you have to go into your desktop and start the data transfer process you do need to create the account first like this prior to doing the desktop conversion. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to um, to get that 30% 12 month discount that I discussed. And on top of that, uh, QuickBooks is running another another deal through, I believe, July of 2024, that if you convert from desktop to QuickBooks online, you actually get 50 percent, 50 percent off for 12 months. But it's a manual process to adjust that pricing. So you just email me. I'll put my email down in the description. Just email me with your QuickBooks Online company ID and your QuickBooks desktop uh, license. And then I'll have my, my rep uh, overwrite it from 30% to 50%. So you get 50% off for 12 months. Now, when you're dealing with support, sometimes you, they're going to ask you for your company ID. So when you click on the gear menu on the top right and you click on account and settings, you're going to be able to see all of your settings in here, but you no longer can see your company ID from your settings. Now, you, the settings are important for you to go in there and kind of see where you are, uh, turn features off and on. And it's actually worth it to go into the settings to kind of see all the things that you're able to do and not do in QuickBooks Online. So I really absolutely recommend you to do that. The company ID has now been moved into uh, under profile where it says subscription and billing. So when you click on the gear menu, you click on subscription and billing, it's gonna tell you exactly which version of QuickBooks Online you have, up here, it gives you your company ID. So for technical support, for billing support, they're going to be asking you that stuff quite a bit. So make sure you know how to get there, can get there uh, fairly quickly. If you need to downgrade to QuickBooks Online uh, uh, Simple Start or you need to upgrade to, let's say, uh, QuickBooks Online Plus or Advanced, you can do that through here fairly easy. Notice that it's just a simple process to um, upgrade or downgrade. So it's actually simple, pretty simple process to upgrade or downgrade, and uh, and you can cancel your free trial in here. So if you did put a credit card in and you want to make sure you don't get charged within the 30 days because you're not going to use QuickBooks, make sure you come back here and cancel your uh, trial. One thing is just kind of a nuance. If you upgrade or downgrade your plan, the discount, the 30% off discount goes away. So if you do that, you can have to email me so I can, again, contact, uh, have my contact that into it, override that and give you that 30% discount. Again, that's only for people that are creating the account after watching this video. If you already created the account in the past, 
you get whatever discount or you are whatever price they gave you. That's just for for you guys, for, for the people that are creating the account as sort of they watch the video. Now in this screen, the other things you're gonna see is what other additional um, services are connected to this. So QuickBooks Online Payroll, it's an additional service, you pay extra for that. QuickBooks Time is an additional service, you pay extra for that. That's to do time tracking on your cell phone. So if you have employees clocking in and out on the road, you wanna use QuickBooks Time. QuickBooks Time and QuickBooks Online Payroll is bundled together. So once you get payroll, you get QuickBooks Time automatically. But some people don't use QuickBooks Payroll, they use some other payroll system. And at that point, they would use QuickBooks uh, Time on their own. There's QuickBooks uh, Live Services, bookkeeping, basically, this is QuickBooks or Intuit pretending to be an accounting firm and offering sort of accounting bookkeeping support. I am honestly uh, more the type of person that would convince you to work with a local CPA or a local bookkeeping firm, someone that you can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with. But uh, if you wanna try you know, uh, Intuit or QuickBooks offering you bookkeeping services, obviously that's what QuickBooks Live Bookkeeping is. And, and if you have that activated, that would show up in there. And then down here is QuickBooks Online Payments, which is for you to um, charge credit cards to so be able to pay with your credit card. So give your customers the ability to pay with their credit cards when you invoice them. That's all also an additional service because they charge per transaction and they have to underwrite your account, make sure you have good credit and that sort of thing. Specifically as a reseller, um, if you're gonna add QuickBooks Online Payroll with QuickBooks Time or, or without QuickBooks Time or QuickBooks Online Payments, email me because uh, the discounts get extended um, uh, to those services, but you can't activate in product. If you activate in product, you basically have, the, you're gonna pay the price that shows up in product, but if you go through a reseller, you get a little bit of a better deal. So you will notice that in product, you see things like 50% off for three months. For payroll, you get same 30% off for 12 months when you go through a reseller. This is why there's a brand new account or if you have an account, you already had an account before, as long as you activate through a reseller, you get that better deal. And for payments, you also get a slightly better uh, better price. Anyway, so that's, um, that's uh, QuickBooks Online in a nutshell. Um, I'm gonna create multiple videos walking you through sort of the next things that you're supposed to do. There's a whole bunch of things that you're gonna do with QuickBooks Online when you first create the account. What I've showed you is just scratch the surface. I just created an account. Uh, the most, most of the times, the very next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna enter all your beginning balances in your chart of accounts. So for example, if you already had some sort of accounting, maybe it ended last year where an accountant did your taxes or something like that, and you're starting this year from scratch, or maybe you're, you, know, you, you, did a, you did it with a spreadsheet in the middle of the year, and you're starting QuickBooks in the middle of the year, that sort of thing, you're gonna go in your chart of accounts and you're gonna be creating each of the accounts with the beginning balances so you can have your starting point. Now, again, I will do an entirely different video explaining that process, so definitely subscribe to the channel and uh, check out the description below. Um, every time I add a new video, that's a natural next step to this one, that's gonna be listed in the playlist in the description section. But anyway, in this chart of accounts section, that's where you're gonna be creating the accounts. So for example, I'll just show you a quick example. I'll go to new. Let's say I'm gonna create um, a Bank of America checking account that I have. And let's say I'm starting to enter stuff in QuickBooks, let's say April 1st of 2024. So I'm gonna to go to other and then I'm gonna put here April 1st, 2024. And then it's gonna be uh, your duty to take the uh, statement balance of March 31st. So right before we started using QuickBooks and you're gonna enter that balance from your bank statement. You gotta do that with all your bank statements, you gotta do that with all your credit cards, all your loans, uh, any uh, assets and liabilities that you've been tracking in a different accounting system. You have to enter all these beginning balances. And unfortunately, this is the type of stuff that an accountant does. This is, if, you're, if you're not an accountant, if you don't have accounting background, entering beginning balances usually becomes a really big hot mess. And it's not worth it to start your accounting with a hot mess. So. I'm just showing you here, and again, I'll do some videos explaining that, but most of the times, if your business already is established and there and there's historical balances to bring in, that's where you wanna get a QuickBooks consultant and accountant to kinda of help you out. But that's, in a nutshell, what the process is. And then in the chart of accounts, you're gonna create all your categories, your income categories, your expense categories, your assets, your liabilities, all the different categories that later on you wanna be able to see in a report so you can understand the financial health of your organization. 
So that's kind of the very first thing we do. We do the chart of accounts. The second thing that we do is we go to bank transactions. And we want to do is we want to connect our bank. So if you have a major bank that has online banking, Bank of America, Chase, you know, all the big banks have that. You're going to come in here and you're going to put your user ID and password for every bank. And essentially, you're going to tell it which accounts, uh, bank accounts and credit cards you want to connect to QuickBooks. You're going to tie them onto that beginning balance that you set up on your chart of accounts. Because obviously, you don't want to bring stuff from before you set up a beginning beginning balance. So everything that's after that, all the beginning balances that you put in and all the new transactions that come after that, you want to download them through the bank. That way, you're not entering transactions by hand and you're taking advantage of the amazing bank feeds, bank rules, and bank automation system that QuickBooks Online has. Again, I'll do a separate video just on banking because that one's a little bit more complex. It has a lot of meat uh, and potatoes in it. You probably need to spend about an hour to an hour and a half to understand really how to exploit all the different awesome features that QuickBooks Online Banking has. So that was kind of like the second major step. So first, the chart of accounts, beginning balances, then connecting the banks. The next thing you want to do is then set up your invoices. It's probably the most typical thing because you use QuickBooks so you can invoice your customers and get paid. So let's say we go to create a new invoice. And then um, the very first thing you're going to do is you can maybe take a tour, kind of walk you through what everything is. But most importantly, you want to customize the invoice. So you want to pick what fields you want to see. You want to add a logo. Again, we'll, I'll do a separate video explaining all the moving parts on how to customize uh, uh, the, the invoice. That way you can start invoicing your customers. And likely at some point, uh, once you actually want to uh, invoice your customers, you want to activate your payment accounts. As I mentioned earlier, if you go to activate payments accounts and you do it in product, you can enter all your company information here and get activated. You can do that. However, um, there's a slightly better rate when you go through a reseller. So prior to setting up your own payment accounts, just email me again. I know so one little step, email me and you're going to get a much better rate. So for example, and, and again, these rates change and, and are dynamic. For example, if QuickBooks is offering 3.2% to the general public, you know, to charge you per credit card transaction. As a reseller, maybe you get 3.0 or 3.1. So it's slightly, it's a small percentage, but over time with volume, it adds up. So again, as a reseller, I kind of have that advantage that I can sort of resell these products and give people a slightly better, uh, better rate. There's a lot more stuff to cover here, but I think for the most part, as long as you know that all the general settings are going to be in the gear menu, so all the different things that you set up and configure about the account is going to be on that right side of the screen on the gear menu. And then everything that's a transaction that's going to be on the on the new button. You're going to click on the new button and then everything that's a new transaction you enable or you um, turn on or, or start the new transaction from there. And then most of the navigation of all the areas of QuickBooks are going to be in this left navigation bar where you can see all the different uh, things inside QuickBooks that you can that you can access. And I'll also do a separate video kind of explaining the left navigation bar and how to customize uh, this menu. You can actually make a custom based on the functions that you use and you don't use. Also, you can collapse the left navigation bar on demand if you want more real estate. And if you can search all the historical transactions that you've entered through the search bar and it takes you straight into that transaction. Okay, so without further ado, I won't waste any more time. That's your basic 101 how to get QuickBooks online started. Again, subscribe to the channel, check out the description, all the follow up videos that tell you what the next step is and the next videos you should be watching chart of accounts, banking, navigation bar, <clears throat> invoices, bank reconciliations, all this stuff. I'm going to list them in the description uh, down there so you can uh, keep following along and have a successful experience using QuickBooks. I'll see you on the next one.